All right, girls, so we're gonna learn a little bit about outfield today. Um, one of my favorite positions, you know, like I, I shared in the video before, I went from a second baseman to being an outfielder in a matter of a college season. Um, and I wish I had learned more about that uh, that skill and being left, center, and right before I actually got in that position. Because there's a lot to know about it that we actually don't really know about unless we put ourselves in those positions and train in those positions. So the first one we're going to start with is a drop step drill. So we're going to do this together. And we're going to do quite a bit on each side. And I'll let you know in the rep section how many we're going to do on each side. Um, but we're going to start with the drop step glove side and then drop step bare hand side. And then we'll do drop step straight back. So you can see here, I've set up three cones just to give you a little bit of a visual. Um, over on this side is always gonna be me dropping to my bare hand side. Down the middle is gonna be me dropping straight back. And over here is gonna be dropping to my glove side. So when I'm saying drop step, I'm using cones, but you could just like have any markers you want, like a piece of tape or anything. Um, when I say drop step, you're gonna start in your outfielding ready position. So again, it's gonna be one foot ahead of the other. I preferably like glove side ahead of each other. I know I switch it up every once in a while. It depends on where I'm comfortable. But in the outfield, I actually like glove side foot is a little bit more ahead. Uh, some people like it this way so that their first movement is this. But I like it this way so that when I take that step with here, my glove's ready to drop and hop if I have to. So I'm starting with this foot a little bit more forward. Again, this is to your comfort what size you want, but you can't be flat. One has to be ahead of the other. So starting like this, when I say drop step bare hand side, what that means is our first movement in outfielder should be straight back. So this is a drop step. Okay, if I'm saying drop step glove side, this is a drop step. My first, first movement is this foot going back and I'm basically going in a running stance. At no point do I take my head off the ball. So it's not me drop stepping like this, it's me drop stepping like this, okay? And I do not run with my glove up in the air. I run with my glove tucked in a fast sprinting position, last second putting my glove up to make that play. And if I wanna drop step straight back, basically this foot just go, depending on what side, if I'm drop stepping straight back this side or drop stepping straight back this side, I open up my belly button so I'm completely parallel now. And basically I'm running straight back like this, keeping the eye on it. So it's just the angles that I'm taking with the drop step. So we're gonna try a couple of drills here. Ready? Drop step bare hand. Drop step straight back. Drop step close side. Drop step. Drop step. One more. Drops it. Drops it. Um, why is the first movement back? Well, is it easier to run backwards or forward? Preferably forward, right? If you have a ball coming at you, it's a lot easier to run in on that ball because you don't have to pull your head off of it than it is to run backwards on that ball. So that's why we say our first movement at home is always a drop step, even if it's just a rock. So you'll always see me in the field, like even if it's just gonna be a little hit that's coming in front of me, I'm in a position to where my first step is this, and then a sprint in if it's coming in. Because then my momentum's already going to the hardest play. And even when I take that little step back and I want to move back forward to get that ball that's in front of me, unless it's very obviously in front of me, if I want to do that, I'm pushing with this foot to give me momentum to sprint forward. So I actually get a bigger boost. I'm not losing any time at all.
Uh, the other ones is the outfield stances. So um, I've spoken about before, uh, being in an outfield, you are the last line of defense. So being the last line of defense, you've got to know the different outfield stances. So the, my favorite ones are always the ready stance, getting that ball right in the middle of the body. I call it meat of the body. You know, you want your chest over top of it. So if it rolls up, it's going to come back down. I don't want it like this. I don't want to ramp. Or it's just going to fly over top of our head. So that preferably, if you're going to do this, we'd put down the safety and we drop the knee. So I call this the safety meat of the body. So the leg comes down. If it misses, still going to hit that leg. My body's in a position to just pop and throw as well too. Okay? So we're going to try a couple of those in that position. We're going to drop. Someone can roll a sock at you if you have it. If not, just air, air this drill. And then we're going to pop it through. Okay? Drop. Drop. Throw. coming in a really 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 fast pace and we don't have much time to get to it and it's coming to one side or the other of our body but it's coming to this side of our body there's what we call the do or die so we're retrieving the ball off the outside of this foot glove side foot ball is going in the glove bringing it into the body coming in making the throw so we're going to practice a couple of do or dies ready stands You can just pop if you want. I'm going into a grow hop right now. That's when the ball is coming really quick. You don't have much time. The only movement you can make is that scoop into the body to make that throw. When the ball is coming at us and we have time to, you know, actually get our body down, that's when we're using this stance. Um, if the ball's coming from the opposite direction and we have the backhand on it, our first goal is to drop step to get our body around it. Okay? So we don't just want to try to get here, stab the glove down, because now we have to go from here to a throw. What we want to do is drop, get the body around if we can, pop and make that throw. So we're going to work on just getting our body around a couple of those backhand ones. So this is when it's down the line, you don't have much time. You just have to get that glove down in the last second and then pop it in that throwing stance. So our, our next one is obviously we we get that backhand play. We can't always get our body around it. Like or that's just it's gonna be realistic. We're not always gonna have that. We're not gonna have the ability to take time to make these plays all the time. Sometimes we just have to go with what we have time wise. And so when we have to go the drop step forward over top and retrieve the ball on a backhand play, pop into the throw, this foot's gonna cross over and this foot's gonna cross for the pop. Slow motion, cross, pop. Cross, pop. Cross, pop. You see I even myself out by getting that leg back. So I'm going for the play. Now when I'm stepping here, I'm throwing into the stance, but I'm evening my feet out as well too.
And, uh, and then we all know the Hail Mary, which is you just put your glove wherever you can, just hoping that it touches it because the ball is just wild as heck. But I love this one because this is the one you can have fun with. The Hail Mary is the place that you're going to make mistakes on. But you have to make mistakes to know what your ground is. Um, I know that there's been multiple times where I've just laid out and dove for a ball and because I've just taken the chance and dove for it, I've actually caught it. Where there's been circumstances where it's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have went for that ball, but uh, my next line of defense got it. If I hadn't made an attempt, there's no way I would have got it. So that's one of the hardest parts is like making the decision of when you're going to dive and not dive. Um, there's different uh, circumstances and situations where you will. And there's different circumstance situations where you, where you won't play. Like, for instance, if there's one out, um, the winning runs on third base and you are diving for a ball that's way, way out, you know, where it's going to be foul if it lands no matter what. If you catch that ball, all that runner has to do is tag up and go. You're not going to dive for that ball unless directed by a coach, right? But you're, you want to make sure that there's a position where if you're going to catch that ball, you can actually pop and make that throw home. So you're not going to be able to make that from the ground. And so being realistic, unless it's a really shallow one. And so just being realistic with yourself and when you can and cannot do that. So there's two kinds of tracking. Um, there's the ones that some of the older athletes can do, which is where if they're watching a ball the whole way, and then all of a sudden they realize the ball is actually further than them, They'll take this head and spin it this direction, pulling their head off the ball like this. One more time. But that's because they have the ability in the game plan, the game knowledge, to be able to do that. For the younger ones, we suggest if you see that ball going over here and you're drop stepping and all of a sudden it's changing direction, switch to the drop step this way, not pulling your head off the ball. Um, you do have to have some experience in being able to pull your head off the ball and still retrack it. There's a lot, of play, like a lot of things that come into play with that. And so um, it's really good to practice both just to get a little bit of a feel for both. But starting at the younger age, you will do the, just change directions this way. And I actually suggest practicing that. So we're gonna try some of those. We're gonna try 15. So it's gonna be back, change. Back, change. Back, change. Now, if you want to try a couple of the more advanced ones, go for it, because that's what this is all about, trying them out. Ready? It's back change. So whatever one you're more comfortable with, obviously, the only thing about this one, is so you pull your head off of it for a split second. So the cut, um, if these girls out here are the fielders that are throwing into me and I'm lining myself up for the cut, 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 I want to make sure that when I turn, my glove is pointed towards that target. Okay, so if I'm out here for the cut and I turn this way, I can't throw with my glove hand. This is the hand to make the throw with, so now I've got to turn again to make that throw. So we're going to line ourselves up and always flip our glove towards the target. Okay, so again, cut, cut, cut. Practicing again. Cut, cut, cut. We get to an age where um, it's actually helpful to yell what you're cutting to. So, for example, if you're the right fielder and you hear cut, 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 more than likely it's the second baseman calling that play. But when you get a little bit older, it can actually be different bases. And so um, it does help to say, like, if I'm the cut and I'm trying to line my cut up with, like, a cut home or a cut two or a cut three, which means after I've cut that ball, I'm gonna make an attempt at that bag, I'll actually yell that. So we're gonna practice going through a couple of different cuts too. Uh, very rarely will you cut one because they've already passed first base. So you're gonna yell cut two, cut three, or cut four. And if you're doing that, they know that that's kind of the direction that you're lining them up in because the cut's gonna line that player up. You always wanna be in a, in a almost like a, an angled line to where if that ball's coming straight from me, if I'm throwing at you right now, the ball's coming straight from me, I can make that play straight to you. Or if I move over here, now I'm angled this way. So my, I need to line my cut up 
any way that I can so that I'm actually right at you, okay? So making sure that we're lining our cut top is really, really important as well too. Really hard to demo over top of the phone here. But just making sure that we are turning, yelling for it, and then actually giving them an example of what bag we're cutting to. So cut to, cut to. Now, um, the reason why I say advance is because when you use these terminologies with some of the younger girls, they actually feel like, oh no, I need to throw to two, I need to throw to two. So this needs to be something that the whole team is doing. Um, if you just all of a sudden start yelling, cut two, that player might just hear two and just throw to two. And so um, I make sure that we start with the cut and then when you have a team that has been working together for a while, you can actually get to know their voices and get to know you know, the dynamic of the game played together. Uh, you can introduce that into your gameplay where it's a cut two or a cut three or a cut four. So as long as that's spoken about before and they know that the first place is that cut, wherever that voice is coming from, then that allows them to line up for that cut. So for an example would be, cut two, cut two, cut two. Cut four, cut four, cut four. I don't want to have to turn, grab the ball, pivot this way and make the throw. I'm going to go with the momentum of the throw. So if it's a cut three, uh, we're going to set our arm up in a position to make that throw. So it's like a, we can actually cut from the side here. Where it's cut three, cut three, cut three, here. When we're doing this, we're trying to get their attention for the cut. It's so that they have a visual. Once that you can see they're making that throw, get into position of where you're cutting to. Because you're not going to throw like this. So once you see they're making that throw to you, get into that cut position to the side so that you're lined up just to finish that throw. Don't stay like this, okay? Make sure that you're getting into this position. After they've seen those hands up, they're starting to throw. Now you're getting in a retrieving position, ready to make that throw. One of the biggest questions I get asked is, how do you build your arm up to uh, get to a position or get to a, a, you know, a place to where your arm can make further throws and stronger throws and you know, go from center field to home plate? And the answer to that is practice. Like, I don't do anything special. I throw a lot. And um, I throw probably you know, 100 to 150 balls a day if that's something I wanna work on. And I'll just get all that repetition. Now, each time I'm moving back a little bit more. I may not always be hitting those targets, but I'm setting up a new goal each time. And not only that, my arm is getting nice and loose and extended. Now, I'm not just throwing um, multiple rounds of throwing. I'm also making sure I'm stretching, warming up, uh, icing it if I have to. I'm taking care of it. Like, this is, this is my baby right here. And you guys should treat it that way as well too. Um, you know, obviously I care about my kids more than my shoulder, but I think it's important to I recognize that like, if I don't have this, I can't play. And so we need to take care of our body and be aware of how much we're using it as well too. So making sure that you are icing it if you need to, and but you can utilize it. Feel free 100% to utilize it. You can use it every day as long as you're taking care of it. So making sure that we're uh, throwing lots of balls each day and just backing up a little bit further each time. It's not necessarily how far it is, it's just the repetition of building that muscle in that arm so we can get multiple throws in at a time as well too.